Good morning, everyone. So we're gathering for communion. So just when you feel like it, come up and take a little glass of the uh, wine and take some bread for yourselves. Just do it as I'm talking. I'm quite happy for everyone to do it in their own pace, okay? Yeah. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. So he took the bread. He broke the bread and passed it round to his disciples. And in the same way, he took the cup. And after they had eaten, saying, this cup is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. So today we have a representation here of what Jesus did in the upper room before his crucifixion. When they had come to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Do we hold unforgiveness? We do sometimes, don't we? We might even be holding unforgiveness today. We, have, we think that we've forgotten, but the hurt rises up and its ugly head reminds us of what had happened in the past or maybe even just yesterday, but sometimes usually a long time ago. We know that we haven't quite made the full journey of complete forgiveness. Memories crop up at the most unexpected times. Jesus didn't hold any unforgiveness. He didn't hold on to any unforgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He had been brutally abused, been publicly made a spectacle of, and judged guilty by the crowd to be crucified. It should have been his accusers that should have suffered punishment for crucifying the Son of God. His accusers should have been crying out for forgiveness. They should have been crying out for mercy, for sentencing God's son, his only son, God come from God, to such a brutal death. But instead he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. So how do we forgive? We have to forgive as Christ forgave us, don't we? As the Father forgave us for crucifying his son, that's the only way we can do it. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, sinners, not reconciled yet to God, we were still sinners and Christ died for us. For God so loved the world, the whole world, not just some of us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And friends, we're living in that eternal life now. If you've accepted Jesus as your saviour, you are living in that eternal life now. It doesn't start when we die. So anybody who wants to come up and get the bread and the wine, please do so now. So we're going to break the bread and pour the wine, aren't we? <laughs> today in your presence, Lord. That's what we're doing right now. We live in an antichrist world, don't we? Full of negative thoughts. But Lord, we thank you today that we are in your presence. So as you're holding your bread and your wine, Lord, just forgive me of my forgiveness, my unforgiveness, Lord. When I see and feel the hurt in my soul that others have caused, help me to see through, the, through you, to see them through you, Lord, to see your great love, that you died for them too, that your sacrifice of blood was for their forgiveness also. Help me to live in my resurrected life, Jesus, because the stone of my tomb has been rolled away also. 
to see through the eyes of your love so that I may feel whole and complete in you. My wounds healed, bringing freedom and healing to my memories and release that healing balm into my body and soul, which this unforgiveness has held back. We praise you and thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's take the bread and the wine. Thank you.